Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another What I Ate in a Week video where I show you everything that I ate in a week in a video. This one's gonna be gluten-free themed. I've already done a gluten-free video like two years ago, but um, we're doing one again. Hopefully this one is better than the last. If not, you know, geek me off the planet. With that, please enjoy the video. I'll see you in the end of it. Well, also during it, but you know, this me, you'll see in the end of it. So basically, we're starting on day zero, which all that means is just that I didn't think I was going to film on this day, and then I ended up making a nice little family dinner for dinner. And then I was like, well, might as well just include it in the video. And so that means that we're starting on a dinner and we're ending the week on a lunch. Uh, yeah, I have no further explanation on that. And this is me making a fajita soup from this gluten-free vegan cookbook that I will mention again in this video, but it's basically just a bunch of like sauteed veggies with some onions and olive oil and a bunch of seasonings and then some black beans and then a good tomato-y vegetable-y broth. And then I squeezed a bunch of lime on top of that and topped it with some chips and avocado and cilantro plating on point, you know? And that's all I'll say about that. And I also had some of this cheese dip that I'll talk about later in the video with some chips as just like a little side. Okay, so also this night I wanted to make overnight oats for the next day and I realized I didn't have any milk. So I decided I would show you how I make oat milk, which is the milk that I make if I'm gonna make my own milk. But basically oat milk, it's the same as any other milk. You just blend the oats with water and add a little bit of salt, a little bit of sweetener if you want, and then you strain it through something. I have this uh, like nut milk bag, which I'm not sure how great it is. It takes a long time for me to squeeze it all out. Like it'll take me like 10 minutes. I don't know if that's normal and also if if I'm just like not good at squeezing milk out of a bag. But, um, you know, I just like put on some music, just have a little, you know, me time, squeeze in the bag. Uh, y'all secure in that bag? <laughs> I'm squeezing that bag. We are not the same. And then I'm making my overnight oats and I'm just putting the oat milk, obviously, some chia seeds. I put a little bit of agave in there and one mashed up banana and then the oats. And then I just shake it up really good. Although one thing I want to say that I should have done in this, when you're making like chia seed pudding, you're supposed to like put in the chia seeds into the milk or water or whatever, and then shake it up or stir it up and then wait for like five minutes, just leave it out and then stir it again. And that prevents like clumps of chia seeds that didn't stir up and didn't absorb any liquid. Oh, and it's in an old peanut butter jar just to get the rest of the peanut butter out of there. Otherwise, I would have just put some peanut butter in it. So I want to talk about what I got yesterday. I went grocery shopping yesterday for the week and it was mostly at Walmart, just like a neighborhood Walmart grocery store, not the like super Walmart. And then I went to Save Mart afterwards, which if you have like a Safeway or a Vons, it's kind of like that just for things that I couldn't find at Walmart. Some shiitake mushrooms and some cremini mushrooms. The cremini mushrooms I used for fajita soup last night. And then I have shiitake mushrooms for a rice noodle dish that I'm gonna do. Celery, some basil for the rice dish. It's like a Thai basil dish. I got mint and cilantro. I bought like four bell peppers because I used some in the soup last night. I might make tofu scramble at one point. Two things of green onion. Almost all the recipes that I looked up called for it in some way. A bunch of parsley because I was gonna make um, tabbouleh and falafel. Some tomatoes also for the salad and for anything else, I guess. Some bok choy for the rice noodle dish. And then I have some kale. At Walmart, I bought a thing of hummus because I was gonna make falafel and um, tabbouleh and hummus. They don't have that impressive of a selection of hummus at Walmart. I don't know why I thought it would be. And then at Save Mart, I bought this, which I have actually had Wayfair before. It's okay just to like melt and dip chi chips in. I would not eat it cold. I really did mostly get produce, but I did get some dark sweet cherries. I guess that's also kind of produce, but it's frozen. I never buy cherries, fresh cherries or frozen cherries. So I just figured, 
that would be something interesting to do. This is actually uh, not the one that I bought. The one that I bought I already used last night. So we just have another one of these big cans of black beans. I realized I had planned like a few recipes out of this book for this week. It's a gluten-free vegan cookbook. And then I realized that like, is that legal or ethical for me to like share the complete recipe with you when like it's from a book that you would normally have to buy. My brother gave me this book a few years ago for like my birthday and I really have not used it as much as I have wanted to. I just like collect recipes, you know, and then say that I'm gonna use them and then I never do. And then I bought some stir fry rice noodles. They didn't honestly have as many rice noodle options at Walmart than I thought they would. I bought four bananas and I also did buy one of those like big cans of diced tomatoes that I already used last night in the soup. I'm trying to think of other things I used. Oh, a zucchini. I used that already in the soup, the whole thing. Favorite peanut butter, the best peanut butter. And that's it. I'm making something spicy slaw bowls with shrimp and edamame, but we're obviously not gonna use shrimp. And it has cabbage, radishes, scallions, rice vinegar, sesame oil, sesame seeds, lime juice, crushed red pepper, and salt. And that's it. And then we're gonna add some like avocado on top and edamame. See how it goes. So after I tried the dressing on a little bit of the mix just to see what it tasted like, I wanted to add a little bit of agave to it just to make it a little thicker and also put like a little sweetness would be good in it. And then for lunch that day, I just ate the rest of the salad out of the bowl that I couldn't fit in my Tupperware container. Soup. With some ugly avocado, some ripped up cilantro. Some chippies and some chippies that I'm just gonna... Chippies. Oh my gosh, that plating though. Today, my friends, we're gonna try out these dark sweet cherries. Okay, oh, they're huge. Look at that. Okay, I'm putting five cherries in here. Approximately one banana, one leaf of kale, or however I should say that. And I'm gonna pick it off of the um, stem. Does that seem like too much? I'm really scrunching it in there, so then you can't really tell, but two tablespoons. I don't know how much oat milk. Just like that much. Okay, well, I'm already gonna just adjust a little bit. Maybe two more cherries and a few more pieces of bananas. Oh. Oh, I think the cherry chocolate flavor is really good. It's like I can taste how good it would be if it didn't have the kale in it. <laughs> the kale is a little prominent. Oh, I didn't put peanut butter in it. Since I already stirred this peanut butter and I already have this knife dirty in here, I'm just gonna, you know, eat this as part of my breakfast so there's some extra protein right there, you know? Okay. Just so you know. So basically the point of this like salad lunch option was for the people that need to take lunch to work or school and you don't want to have something that you have to reheat every time. But I noticed the other day when I had this before class that it really like was not filling enough. Like I was still hungry afterwards. So I wanted to add like a carb to it. I would have added rice, but the fact that, you know, you kind of have to reheat rice for it to not be like hard out of the fridge. So I decided to do quinoa instead and it was really good. ashamed about the fact that you haven't been able to finish a physical book since high school questioning whether you even know how to read something that's not on a phone screen or a computer screen at all anymore me too and now it's quarantine time you know quarantine we have all this like free time alone time but i don't know about you i still don't see myself picking up a book anytime soon but you know what i will do a lot um is pick up my phone 
And with my phone, I can go to the Audible app. Most of you probably have already heard about Audible, but what you may not have known is on top of having thousands of audiobooks from several genres, they also have meditation programs, exercise programs, news, podcasts, and more. Right now, I'm listening to an audio show entitled The Dark Web which I don't usually listen to or watch a lot of documentary style things because I tend to get bored and zone out because my brain is tiny. But this is really interesting. I wanted to check it out because I have been fascinated by the dark web. I want to know how it works. And yeah, apparently I know absolutely nothing about it and um, questioning my very existence as we speak. Just kidding. But the episodes go by really fast, partially because I'm multitasking, making my breakfast. I'll be like getting ready for the day of being alone in the house. If you want to support the channel and check out Audible by getting a free trial, you can go to audible.com slash Emily Ewing or text Emily Ewing, all one word, to 500 500. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title they want, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection and access to daily news digests and guided meditation programs. So again, that's audible.com slash Emily Ewing or text Emily Ewing, all one word, to 500 500 to try out Audible with a free trial. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And get on with it. Um, I'm gonna make another smoothie today and I had to check the memory card on this camera to make sure I wasn't wearing the same thing yesterday also. Cause I feel like it's just all the days are blending together um, lately and it's not very fun. Similar to yesterday's smoothie, but no cocoa powder, and yes, peanut butter and hemp seeds. If you know what I mean. Nutty and seedy. Four cherries. Or maybe more. Six. Ooh. One leaf of kale. This one's smaller than the other day. Wow, look at how, that looks crazy. A couple spoonfuls of crunchy peanut butter. I'm not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna put some hemp seeds in here. Okay. And I am going to put a little bit more banana in there because I didn't have that much to begin with. Smoothie. Ooh. That is good. I might be actually liking these cherries better than like the usual berries that I get. So I wanted to add some more ingredients to the soup to freshen it up, you know? I cut up a bunch of kale and threw that in. It was too much kale for sure. And then I put some air fried potatoes on top of that, started all up, and that was my dinner. Very, um, chewy. <laughs> okay, so I'm once again asking for you to watch me make a smoothie. I'm gonna combine mixed berries with dark cherries. I want to reenact the meme. Banana, banana, banana. A leaf of kale. Peanut booter. Okay, we got some hemp seeds. Uh, when a, oh, this is like a raw, okay. A raw vegan is like, oh my God, peanut, I mean whipped cream and, okay, I can't do it. There's a joke, okay, in my head. I, I tell the joke to myself. Um, a lot, I don't really put it out there in the world. I used to sometimes watch like raw vegan videos or whatever, or I'd come across them. And like, they always just like take two random things and then they're like, it's an apple pie. And it's just like an apple and a date and a walnut. Yeah, so this is um, raw vegan whipped cream with sprinkles. So, but it's not that funny at all. So it's, it's really not funny at all. It wasn't funny in my head. It wasn't funny when I said it. It's not gonna be funny when it is in the video and when you guys see it. When I upload it, some oat milk in here. It's 
not as good as when it just has cherries, but it's still really good. I want to get the rest out of this jar because it's like stuck on the lid and stuff. Some of that in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of water too. Dressing. That's a lot of avocado. That's my freaking lunch, dude. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. All right, so I made the oat milk earlier in the video, and when you make oat milk or any kind of like DIY milk, you have the pulp left over. Basically, the, like the solid part that you're squeezing the liquid from um, that's left inside of the bag after you squeeze it out. I know like a lot of people use pulp to make like crackers or cookies or whatever, so I was trying to find like a recipe for some gluten-free cookies out of oat milk pulp, and um, I found this recipe. I'm not sure if it was the recipe or me, I'm sure well I'm sure it was me I added all the ingredients and it was still like very wet and so I added a little bit more dry ingredients and then it was still kind of wet honestly kind of more like a pancake batter or something like that or bread oh I should have just put it in a loaf pan I bet that would have been good actually hmm. well they turned out fine like they tasted good it's like a good little snack but they basically were kind of like baked pancakes if that makes sense like that they um emulated a healthy pancake in some ways which is fine I think the problem was that I didn't have enough oat pulp or my oat pulp was too wet or something i don't know anyways <laughs> we got our tofus that we're gonna well i should have done a flat so we're gonna take this and just dip it into here just trying to make sure they all have oil on them so just shaking it up you know these mushrooms are like pre-sliced i didn't know if i wanted to slice them more or if that was good I also don't know how much bok choy to use, so I just, I cut quite a bit. This might be too much. Back to our tofu. Should I flip them over now? Yes, I should. And it's so loud, can you hear me? That's it, my guys. I'm just gonna put these in now. Lay green onions. I wanted to use a little bit of this cabbage in here because I have all this cabbage. So I'm just gonna throw that in. And if I have to overcook the other things to cook this, that's okay. I don't know what I'm doing clearly, but who cares? Yeah, I probably should have rinsed them also this is so much dang it i should have read directions better <laughs> maybe it's not even bad at all maybe there's no issue whatsoever basil it smells good i am smelling some good smells up in this house we're about to try some right now it's pretty good the tofu is honestly very flavorful I'm just upset about the noodles, but also like maybe it wasn't the best recipe because like it's from like a health website. Everything is how I planned it to be and that's that. Ow. <laughs> So I know I've made a lot of smoothies in this video, um, but this one is interesting because I ran out of the oat milk that I made, but I figured, why can't I just put like oats and water in the smoothie, which is the ingredients in my oat milk, you know, and just see how it went. It's definitely different than when I use like the actual milk, you know, there's a slightly different texture, but you, you know, you get a little bit more oaty flavor, oaty, oat t flavor, but it's definitely an option, like when I run out of milk I'm definitely just gonna put like oats and water in the smoothie now because it, it does provide like that creaminess to a degree rather than just putting like water in the smoothie you know and then um I was at Whole Foods with my mom and I actually had kind of a difficult time finding something that was like a ready-made lunch meal that was gluten-free and vegan but I got this avocado roll and I just stole the brags to put on it from like the salad bar because it only came with like soy sauce and obviously soy sauce um has gluten in it but it was expensive like all of their little sushi things were so expensive i don't understand all right so now for emily's official peanut butter cookie recipe that everyone has been asking for like crazy i can't even like get through all the comments like it's wild 
Basically, first you make a flax egg. And this is actually two because I'm making a double batch here, but you set it aside for it to thicken up while you do the other things. It should be one cup peanut butter, one cup sugar, but I'm doing two cups of each, obviously. And I'm using two different kinds of peanut butter. This is not necessary. We just always have two different kinds of peanut butter um, <laughs> for my parents and for me. And I just don't like to use only one type because it'll be like the jar will be empty after I do it. And then I use half brown sugar and half uh, white sugar because I find that that works best. But I've also made them with just white sugar and that works too, if that's all you have. And then I also put in a teaspoon of baking soda and mix that in. And then you put in your flax egg. It should be a lot thicker by now. And it should change the texture somewhat when you're mixing in the flax egg to where it's more of like a cookie dough, I guess. It's easier to scoop and make into like balls, little cookie balls. The recipe will be in the description. It's bake at 350 for like 10, 12, 14 minutes ish. I don't know. Basically, this is me demonstrating for you what happens if you don't wait for them to cool. They should come off of the cookie sheet really easily without even like um, spraying it or or oiling it or anything. Like for me, they always come off clean. I don't have to do anything because the peanut butter provides enough like oil, I guess, to slick it. But yeah, if you don't wait for them to cool, they just like crumble at your touch. So yeah, please make these for a party. They're super good. If you like peanut butter, you'll love them. If you don't like peanut butter, you might also like them. I've had some people tell me that they don't like peanut butter cookies, but they like my peanut butter cookies, so... Sesame oil, a little bit of olive oil, braggy boys, and okay, calm down, calm down. That might be way too much. What am I? White pepper on this, garlic powder, a bit more brags. Do it up, baby. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, so we're gonna make a tofu scramble and I just realized that the battery for this is gonna die soon. We have the tofu. I pressed it in the tofu press. It's a lot uh, smaller than it was before. I don't really know how much you're supposed to press tofu if you even should press it for making tofu scramble, but I haven't done it before so I wanted to try it. I cut up some onion. I wanted to use purple onion, but our purple onion has a giant sprout coming out of it. I have some mushroom and bell pepper of all different colors. Three little breakfast patties that I cut up from the brand Pure Farmland, which I found at Sprouts for a lot cheaper than Beyond Burger. And you know, we're not doing anything crazy here, okay? I just haven't made a tofu, tofu scramble in a while. And now that I have a tofu press, I wanted to see what kind of difference that would make. And also, I wanted to put this like sausagey stuff in it because it sounded good. We got our onions. Now I'm gonna put these in, I guess. Putting it in. So we're gonna scramble this up into here. Scrambling. Salt, crushed. Red pepper, some cumin, I don't know, some chipotle powder, yeah, smoked paprika, lots of garlic powder, of pepper, I think I am going to throw a little bit of kale in here, um, this honestly, Rag I mean it looks pretty freaking fun. If you ask me. I think it's mainly just like salt that it needs. Oh, you know. What the f- So basically I just mixed it back into the pan. And got some- a new plate. And I'm gonna put some nutritional yast on top. And dig in. You know? Just dig in. Pretty good. I'm, s I'm not that much of like a savory breakfast person. And I never cared that much for eggs. So this isn't really my thing. But it's good. And I think I do like it better pressed.
Okay, so basically, I wanted to make falafel this night, and uh, I tried to find a mix for falafel that didn't have gluten in it, but I could not. And so I tried to make it from scratch. I blended dry chickpeas in the Vitamix to make chickpea flour, and I think it worked, but the falafel did not work. Um, there's a few reasons why that might have happened. I'll put those in the description. But basically, it fell apart when I tried to fry it. And also, don't make fun of me the way that I fry things. I only fry things like once or twice a year, so I'm not exactly skilled in it. Um, but basically, when they didn't fry, I baked them in the oven for a little bit first, just so they would be like firm enough to stay together when I fry them. They were definitely edible, but they were not good. Okay, they were fine. They just weren't like good, if that makes sense. I will definitely try again and please, you know, if you want to send me your favorite falafel recipe or, you know, tips or whatever, please do because clearly this is not ideal. But, you know, I tried and that at the end of the day, that's what really matters. And also don't make fun of me for getting Sabra hummus. And I also made some quinoa tabbouleh. I didn't even know that tabbouleh. Okay, what does it have in it? Let's see. Okay, so it has bulgur in it, which I believe is a, of the gluten family. This recipe was from the gluten-free cookbook that I've spoken about, and it uses quinoa instead. Yeah, it's really good. It's got a bunch of mint and parsley in it. That's what that's all the green. So this was the meal. I kind of just made like a little sampler platter, you know, for myself and um, for my parents with some celery and carrots and hummus. Not exactly the most extravagant dinner, but you know, it's a simple, easy little, well, the falafel wasn't easy because I ruined it, but I digress. I don't know what I want to do. So I've never made those. I just realized that the dishwasher is running so that hopefully that's not too loud. But I've never made the infamous three ingredient banana oat pancakes. Well, these, I guess, isn't three ingredient if you include salt and sweetener of choice if desired. But anyways, it's just oats blended into oat flour, or if you have oat flour, and then a ripe banana, and then a little bit of milk of choice. Although I am gonna put a little bit of earth balance on the pan as I like fry them, but yeah. And here to blend. I should try to like sift it in, huh? Sift. There we go. And then, um, just gonna blend the banana with how much milk? I don't even think I need a sweetener because this was a really ripe banana, so I'm just not gonna, just not gonna do that. Okay. A pinch of sweet. <gasps> cherries. I might want cherries in this. <gasps> Chocolate cherry. Thinner than my usual pancake batter. So the first one is gonna be plain, I guess, just so I can like try it. I don't know how th thick they should be. Oh, I feel like I should have put baking soda in this. What the heck? Why not? I don't understand why you wouldn't put baking. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of baking soda in. My frozen cherries that I cut up. <gasps> Woo! Look at that, it's a pancake. Looks kind of weird. I mean, worst case scenario, it's literally just oatmeal on the inside, so. Ah. Oh, this is a weird shape for sure. What? It's a flower. Oh my god, that's crazy. Then I'm gonna put chocolate chips in for the last. What the? I feel like it was on there for two seconds. Bruh. But look how this one looks like a pancake. That's so cool. Look at these pancakes. They look completely different. What? What? Why would you make this? Looks stupid. Why did you, why are you burning? Maybe it's not even burning, it's just, it's just the chocolate that's burning, probably. Uh, yeah. Whoops. Honestly, they look really good. The ones, like the later ones. Like, this is a pancake, you see. This is a pancake. This, a pancake. And then, this is like spongy and, I don't know. It's like fine. Like, if someone served me that for breakfast, I'd be like, yeah, nice, okay, fine. But I wouldn't serve it to anyone else for breakfast, you know what I mean? That looks good though. Like, look at that. What? 
it's better and it's thicker. It's still like definitely tastes like a healthy pancake. Um, Thanks for watching. Um, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. If you're not subscribed, I love you also just like a little less. Hope you guys are able to stay safe and keep in contact with loved ones through virtual methods. I'll have a 100k special hopefully soon unless, you know, everybody just like no one subscribes to the channel ever again and I just like stay at 97,000 whatever forever. That'd be interesting. Um, 